So uh, I give the floor to Her Royal Highness Princess Nizreen El Hashemite. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Your Excellency, Dr. Helena Dali, the Minister of Social Dialogue, Consumer Affairs, and Civil Liberties of Malta, Ms. Lakshmi Puri, the Executive Director of UN Women, the e Director of UNESCO Office in New York, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, and our distinguished guests and panelists, on behalf of the Royal Academy of Science, I would like to welcome all of you to the second commemoration of the International Day of Women and Girls in Science. It is very heartening to see such a great turnout from so many of you who have been able to come through the snow to arrive here for this remarkable day. Indeed, it is remarkable to be here to celebrate our second International Day of Women and Girls in Science at the General Assembly Hall. Last year, I spoke about turning a dream into reality, and this year, we are moving from reality into a year of implementation and strong commitment to support women and girls in science and in science education for the Sustainable Development Goals and beyond. This day is for all of us, women and girls, and the men and boys who are supporting our vision to dream and aim large. The story of the resolution was adopted by the General Assembly precisely when the PGA of the 70th session of the General Assembly was sitting in this place at 4 p.m. on the 22nd of December 2015, and when he said adopted, is a great one, having begun all this resolution have begun in the declaration from the inaugural World Women's Health and Development Forum that was organized by the Royal Academy of Science International Trust and held at the UN and with the participation at the ministerial level, including the active participation of Minister Dr. Helena Dali and Ms. Lakshmi Puri, the Deputy Executive Director of UN Women and the UNESCO as well. The Department of Economic and Social Affairs also helped from the beginning of our dream with the ever steady close cooperation of then Director of the Division of Sustainable Development, Mr. Nikhil Seth. Mr. Seth stated at the inaugural World Women's Health and Development Forum that the ideas discussed in the forum enriched the UN beyond just the political debate. The outcome declaration of the forum, which the participants contributed to and approved by acclamation reflects an ambitious global action agenda and a roadmap for women's health and development. So in enabling us to discuss the many existing problems, issues facing women and societies today, and then to determine the indispensable solutions, actions, policies, and programs to overcome these problems and issues, we need to recognize the role of women in science in the sustainable development process. Such recognition should be through acknowledging the accomplishments and the achievements of women in science. The participants in the forum clearly indicated the need to ensure sustainability of development for women and all humankind, to achieve equality and full participation for women in science in decision-making and sustainable development programs, and to build political, international, and scientific support for the improvement of women in science education, employment, right, li livelihoods, and provision of services. Reset strongly believes that the sustainable development goals to a great degree need a strong science base, and this cannot be achieved at any level unless girls and women have an incentive such as recognition and example, uh, the example of role models to have in front of them. In implementing one of the points of the inaugural World Women's Health and Development Forum declaration, I wrote a letter to the President of the 69th session of the General Assembly requesting on behalf of all participants at the forum and, the, and all the associations of women in science worldwide to take the necessary steps to declare February 11th an International Day of Women in Science. The delegation of the Republic of Malta assumed the responsibility to engage in the informal consultations that led to the draft resolution and its ultimate adoption as an annual observance to be listed in the UN calendar of official observances. 
Of course, without the presence of the UN Women and the UNESCO, we won't be even achieving this resolution. RASET has been working in the spirit of Sustainable Development Goal 17 on creating global partnerships every since our founding. Partnership might be said uh, might be said to be not just our DNA, but a multifaceted helix that is constantly outreaching in new ways. With our presence at the United Nations, we have been writing future history, and today is part of our idea of creating history sooner than later. Today, we celebrate the achievements of women, none and unknown, remembered and forgotten, who have forged the way for those of us in science today. The International Day of Women and Girls in Science logo depicts just this. And those girls who wish to choose role models in science, what better way than to hear our speakers today? And thanks to all of the men and boys who are supportive, starting with the President of the General Assembly and going to Prince Zain al-Hashimite. Women and girls in science will never let you down and will always lift up the 2030 agenda in the implementation through education. Today, the UN system recognizes women and girls in science, and that recognition will be the spark for women and girls to empower themselves to aim for the highest trajectory possible. Today, and more than ever, the voices of women and girls in science is heard at the United Nations. However, we need the voices of women and girls in science to be heard by every person around the world, and this can only be done through media. Media has a great direct impact on societies and its development. In addition to its role in bridging the world, the entertainment media, including cinema and television drama, has a crucial psychological and sociological influence in educating and making individuals. Although entertainment media has succeeded in addressing many issues, the media gender stereotyping found in portrayals of women in general and women in science in particular have played a significant negative impact on the participation of young women and girls in science. And we are here today to discuss how we can partner with the media to achieve parity in science as well as the sustainable development goals. Since last March, I took the initiative and met with many film producers to encourage them to produce films and TV series based on the stories of women in science. One of the film producers asked me what I would like to achieve. My answer was, I have a dream to see the mass media through the influential talk shows that are hosted by celebrities such as Oprah Winfrey, Ellen DeGeneres, and others begin to bring women who are making contributions in science into a regular space for recognition of achievements and to share their stories with the world. I have a dream that women in science will be walking in the street and the public, old and young, will come towards them and ask for a photograph or signature. I have a dream that women in science will be walking on red carpets and treated like celebrities. I have a dream that in the next Oscars, women in science will be presenting the awards to the winners. I have a dream that women in science will be the celebrities and thus the next goodwill ambassadors of the United Nations and its agencies. This is my dream for women in science, and we will achieve it the same way we achieved the International Day of Women and Girls in Science, with UN Women, with UNESCO, with Malta, with each one of you, with every government in here, with the General Assembly, with the United Nations, we will achieve it. The next stop for us in the UN system is the entire process leading up to the Ocean Conference in June of this year. This with the co-presidents of Sweden and Fiji leading the process to help save our oceans. Women and girls in science will commit to help member states and the entire international community to work on the problems of acidification, biodiversity loss, and other issues that science can help to solve. I would be remiss if I don't thank the entire RASET team, especially Rola Dahlan, Richard Jordan, and Nora Mahdi for their work that constantly presented itself. 
and to thank Her Excellency Dr. Helena Dali, the Ministry of Social Dialogue, Consumer Affairs, and Civil Liberties of Malta. And a special thanks to the Mission of Malta, to the United Nations, especially His Excellency Ambassador Carmelo Inguanes and Ms. Annalisa Somot. I also would like to thank on behalf of you all the UN Women and the UNESCO for their great work that they have been doing through the years to, for education, for women, for gender equality, for science, for culture. I also would like to thank the distinguished guests and speakers and all the participants who came from different countries for making today so special. Thank you so much. Thank you for your speech, Your Royal Highness. As always, you continue to inspire us. Your dream is our dream, and let's work for it. We will. Thank you. Okay, so I shall now...